Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, whatever the time is you're in, guys. Uh, it is the morning here uh, with us. It's 10.13 a.m. And uh, today, in this new episode of the Silicon Roundabout podcast, we are joined by an awesome guest, and we have an exciting topic to talk about. So we are joined by the awesome Laura uh, Stembridge, uh, the mental health advocate and founder and CEO at Inside Out. Hi, good Hello, morning. Laura. Good morning. Hi, everyone. It's good to be here. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you very much for you know uh, coming on board and being the guest. So this is going to be a really exciting episode because um, what we're going to talk about today, we're going to start off by uh, discussing mental health, which is a huge, huge, mm. huge topic. Um, especially these days in COVID. Uh, we're going to take your insight, uh, get, try and get your thoughts on the whole thing um, as a mental health advocate. And then we're going to obviously discuss your awesome startup, get people, you know, to know what is inside out, what's happening, what's cool, what are the challenges, et cetera, et cetera. So Laura, just before we begin, um, do you want to perhaps give people a little bit of an intro as to who Laura is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I grew up in Gloucestershire, uh, from the, the West Country, which is uh, southwest of England. Um, I studied sport and physical activity at both degree and master's degree level. Uh, it was one of those things of what are you good at at school? Sport. So you naturally go and study sport. It was like a natural progression exactly Keep on going with um, it. yeah so I grew up in the countryside found myself at Leeds University which is obviously in, in, in one of the big cities in London, in uh, the UK and uh, yeah from there so I came back did a master's degree in uh, physical activity and mental health became a published academic author in the space I uh, worked in health promotion for a number of years before moving across into management consulting and uh, spent the best part of 10 years I think it was working in consulting um, and then from there founded my first startup um, and uh, Inside Out was born on the back of that actually um, in 2018 so um, that's me I, I guess I'm a <laughs> So, so the saying goes really a he he healthy body healthy mind what was the say what the, how does the saying go I can't healthy remember body, healthy now. mind um, is that the one? <laughs> that's, that's the one. Healthy body, healthy mind. So, 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 so you've you, you, you've stuck to that. You've you've gone with the, you know, the started with a healthy body and discovered that there's you know there's more to add here. Went to the mental health. So let, let's talk about then mental health. Let's just address the the big topic. Um, I suppose even though there's a lot of talk about mental health these days, um, there is quite a number of people who still aren't sure what when we talk about mental health what that means they just think if you know you're going through a difficult phase of your life or you know you're just uh, on and off the track that's you know mental health where you need to see a therapist let's just say can can you just perhaps burst that bubble tell us what what is really mental well, health mental health is i think it's a terminology that's get thrown around a lot at the moment right especially during covid i think pretty much every news bulletin you'll you'll read or you'll listen to has the word mental health so mental health is something that we all have. You know, we all have a mind, we all have mental well-being. We have a body, we have physical health, we have physical well-being. Mental health is our ability to cope with stressful situations, essentially. So you know, the environment we're born into, we grow up in, we live in, we work in, all of these things around us, the networks we have, the communities we're a part of, our socioeconomic backgrounds, our financial backgrounds, etc. they all play a part on our mental well-being. And like I say, our mental well-being is our ability to cope with stresses and external influences and even internal influences um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so it's like, almost like a continuum if you, if you kind of take a, a river analogy, right? You know, get a meandering river. That's how our mental health often is. Mm. is each day you know, we might wake up, we might feel like we're in a great mood. Other days we might wake up feeling slightly stressed. We might feel tired if we've not slept well. Um, so mental health is basically our, our state of mind and, and our feeling, and it varies day to day based on the different activities we're doing, the different pressures that are thrown at us, um, and the different challenges that uh, that come our way. So why is it really important then to talk about it 
why why is it important to address it and you know um, give it any attention? Well, I think let's just use the analogy of a, of a knee, you know, a knee injury. So I I hurt my knee playing hockey. Let's use that analogy, right? If I hurt my knee, I'm going to go to the doctor and I'm going to probably get an X-ray. I maybe take some anti-inflammatories. I might do some rehab, but then I'll be pain free and I will be back playing sports again or walking or running or whatever it is that I'm doing, right? With our mental well-being, if we don't talk about how we're feeling and our emotions, they can often get the better of us and they can mount up inside of us to a point where they become all-consuming and all too much and it can alter our moods, it can impact our sleep, our relationships, our ability to work, our ability to function as essentially a basic human. Um, so it's really, really, really important that we take the steps to be able to address our, our mental state. And, you know, like I say, if, if our knee's not working or the car engine isn't working, we take it to the garage to get fixed. You know, essentially our brain is the mechanics of our body. And if our mind isn't working in a way that's you know, positive and is without any challenges, then, you know, we're not necessarily going to be the best possible version of ourselves and the happiest i think that's a better word a happiest version of ourselves so that's why it's really important to talk about what's going on on the inside and get it out into the open so that we can feel happy content balanced and calm and all of these other positive words that go with, with positive mental well-being yeah Hence inside exactly out, everything <laughs> to help people bring their inside exactly. into the outside i mean and, and the, you know the, i guess kind of the, the very very severe consequences of people not talking about their mental well-being um is it, suicide and we now know that the suicide rate is uh one every 40 seconds globally which is an absolutely horrendous statistic to even contemplate globally one every 40 seconds which you know crazy. and these are people Absolutely that crazy. don't feel like there's any other way out than to be able to talk and um, so they don't feel like there's any other way out and they can't talk about their you know their feelings and their emotions um other than to you know to take their own lives and to, to get that kind of peace that they're looking for and that's something that absolutely has to stop you know it's just not unacceptable to be in 2020 going into 2021 with a suicide rate that's that high uh, and we know that the, the prevalence rates around mental well-being and poor mental health um, are, are increasing. And the world, I don't know if you've seen it, but the World Health Organization was saying the other day that there's a, a, basically a mental health pandemic now on its way on the back of COVID and that they expect one in two. So 50 percent of people listening to this podcast today to be going through a challenging time where they might need support, but maybe don't know how to access it, maybe don't know where to go, maybe don't feel like they can. Because let's face it, there's still a whole bunch of discrimination and stigma around mental health and how many people are actually talking about it openly. Yes, you know, there's hot air being given to it in the media, but how many people are turning around to their partners or to their loved ones or to their family or to their colleagues or to their employers saying, look, you know what? I'm actually really struggling here. Why is there a stigma about it? Why, why, why is it, um, you know, in society, there is this, that it's just not okay to talk about it. Um, probably, I, I would say maybe more, more among men than women. It's just, it feels that it's not something that you're comfortable talking about or comfortable bringing out to the open. Where does that stigma come from? It's a generation thing, to be honest. You know, if you think back to our parents' generations and their parents' generations, and it's very much a, a pull your socks in their parents generations it very much was a pull your socks up get on with it you know tough love attitude you will be okay um, and there was just no room given for people to be able to say look you know what i'm struggling and it was seen and perceived to be a weakness you know it wasn't a strength to talk about your feelings and your emotions and particularly within blokes you know it's not macho to be able to say look you know what mate i'm really struggling with this it's that that macho ego um <laughs> where i'm okay yeah. i'm stronger than you i'm fitter than you i'm mentally you know i'm uh, not mentally we'll take that bit out but yeah i'm stronger than you i'm fitter than you i'm better than you you know all of those types of traits yeah. i'm not phased by and anything actually, yeah i, I, I I can actually really probably to relate to that. I, I, mean, I grew up in a sort of a military style household. Uh, but I remember having a, a car crash um, three years ago and I'm 31 now. So I was like 27. And my dad had the biggest go at me ever for actually deciding to take a day off on the day of my car crash. 
saying who Gosh. takes a day off who cares you're fine you're alive yeah, get into work <laughs> you know i'm not fine actually but uh yeah it's it's that it's the crazy generational uh yeah. problems just the the the, the way the way we've, we've we've grown up and it's you think it's also that's why there is a or is there in fact actually is there a difference between uh men and women do more women talk about mental health than men is that a common thing or is it becoming more equal these I days. I think just by nature, women tend to talk a lot more than than, than blokes do. You know, they're, they're much a lot more likely to sit down over a coffee or go for a walk or whatever it is that they do. Pick up the phone and, and have a chat and say, you know, how are you? Um, whereas blokes will be like, you're right, yeah, I'm fine. You, yeah, good. And that's kind of like. <laughs> it's a standard like a standard conversation. conversation in the pub. As far as it goes, daily, daily and I'm conversation. sorry if there are blokes out there listening to this where they're thinking i don't do that i i you know not trying to be stereotypical but um yeah you, you get what i mean and i just think women are yeah I think women are a lot more thing. open to talking about their feelings and their emotions are a lot more sensitive i guess um or at least we're perceived to be a lot more sensitive um and we're more likely to go to doctors and ask for help so i think the number i saw a statistic actually recently where it said that they the number of contemplated suicides where people talk about or think about suicide is higher in women but the number of successful executions is higher in men and i think that's because women actually go to the doctor or they'll talk to their wow. friends or they seek help and support in another way and um, whereas guys don't um, and i think that's that's the difference that's yeah. the old fashion mentality so but i mean there was a it was all that you, is, if is you think gets, about sorry, I was sorry say, go but if you think about all those kind of like you know the, the connotations that, that went with mental health even you know 10 20 30 years ago of you're crazy you're a nut job you know all of these other things that's why people didn't talk about mental health because it was perceived to be the severe end of the spectrum where it's like psychosis you know where you're hearing voices or you're seeing things that perhaps aren't there um not you know, they, they are the very kind of you know very extreme end of, of mental health cases not necessarily sort of the more mainstream end you have the stress the anxiety the, de the depression which we're all suffering um on a day-to-day -day basis uh, or addiction so i think again that's part around the stigma that comes with it and perhaps it was a lack of recognition towards the mainstream conditions but more thinking you know, when you had a mental health problem you were seeing things or hearing voices yeah that sounds like that, that that sounds actually something like you know people mm. from my dad's generation uh probably even the the, the, the culture i suppose um that my dad comes from me from an arab culture until now if i'm to tell them if i'm to talk about mental health i just i can't get the idea into my dad's <laughs> head or into my into a, 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 anyone of, of my dad's age from, from you know from from that from the arab culture as to say look this is what it is they just don't they, they, they can't mm -hmm. seem to understand this. So I think we have really come a huge, a long way from, as you said, 20, 30 years ago till 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 today. But you just said everyone's affected by it. Yeah. Everyone goes through you know, um, ups and downs. What are, you know, what affects our mental health? The things that affect our mental health the most? What do you think, especially in this sort of fast paced life we live these days, um, you know, long working hours, career chasing, etc. I mean, you know, uh, we're both, I suppose, in, in, in a startup <laughs> environment that in itself can have some sort of a toll. And probably most of our listeners are also in the startup environment. So wh what does that do to our mental health? Really? Oh, gosh, well, where to start? What impacts our mental health? How, how long have you got? <laughs> Um, I think there's a, lot, there's a lot of things that impact our mental health, right? You know, I mean, let's take the obvious one, COVID at the moment. Um, you know, that's something that's impacting all of us, right? The yeah, loneliness, the, the isolation, the uncertainty, you know, that uncertainty could be job security. It could be, when am I going to see my friends and family? When can I go back to the gym? You know, when am I going to have some sense of normality back? You know, um, the financial side of it, um, how long are we potentially, you know, if there are people out there that are out of work, how long are they going to be out of work for? What does that mean for them? When are they going to be able to, to come back into the workplace? People that are on furlough. Um, so there's a whole array of things around COVID itself. Obviously, um, the anxiety around actually getting sick or potentially loved ones, um, parents, whoever are getting sick and picking up the virus. Um, you know, then there's other things, you know, the environment in which we live, you know, is it noise? Do you live in a place that's well aired, well lit? Do you live in a place that's noisy next to a main road? Do you 
uh, work in an environment where you have a positive culture and it's happy, you know, or is it hard driven, you know, a lot of backstabbing, negative culture, long hours, lack of reward, lack of compensation, like all of those things, workplace bullying. Um, and the relationships that we have, you know, are they supportive? Are they loving? Are they caring? Or, or are they potentially, you know, controlling, manipulative, like all of these things. So, you know, I think there's, again, we could talk for hours around what impacts your mental health and your mental well-being, but essentially, you know, the environment you live in, the environment you work in, the relationships you have, your financial situation, the amount of physical activity you do, actually, because you know, the more we exercise, the better we feel. Um, yeah, Happy just moving our bodies certainly. and the food that we put into our bodies as well, you know, and the amount of water we drink, you know, do we stay hydrated? Are we fueling our body with the foods, the right foods? Or are we, you know, eating takeaways and... <laughs> Not necessarily what we like, exactly, not necessarily. It's, it's, yeah, it's the, the are we smoking, are we taking drugs, um, like all of these things. For for companies these days, you know, for, for do, do you think a company is becoming more aware of how mental health can affect the performance of their employees? Yeah, I think companies definitely are. And I think, you know, there's increasing pressure now for companies to have to step up to the mark and actually provide mental health support. So we're seeing a lot of individuals, especially younger um, people coming into the workplace and not only asking about the physical health benefits, but also the mental health benefits. So, you know, what do I get by way of support to look after my mental well-being? You know, I get access to private medical. Do I get access to online video therapy coaching? Do I get access to um, preventative tools? Do I get access to, um, I don't know, let's, you know, any other pieces of content, right? Or, or courses or um, meditations, all the things that we can be doing to look after our mental health. So people are asking for this now. And I think companies are realizing more and more that actually they need to staff up and provide better support because when they have better support in the workplace for their employees consequently they're going to see improvements across their team morale productivity profitability revenues etc better performing team means better revenue right better revenue means better business performance and <laughs> which is what better we're all, all striving for so yeah absolutely i think you know people are slowly starting to put two and two together and realizing that it's something that they can't afford not to have um, in the workplace now what would you say the most common uh, mental health um, issues, if you like, um, that typical employees tend to go through, or you've you've seen that companies have reported that needs focusing on? Yeah, I think on? the mainstream conditions that we're seeing are stress, anxiety, depression, and some addictions. Um, you know, when we talk about addiction, we often talk about sex, drugs, rock and roll. <laughs> but actually, addiction <laughs> isn't just that. You know, addiction can be um, you know, exercise. It can be sugar. It can be nicotine. It can be gambling, shopping, like all these different types of addiction. So, um, yeah, with the the mainstream conditions being stress, anxiety, depression, like we know from um, some of the, the the data and the research we've done at Inside Out that over 75 percent now i think it was at the last check of referrals that we're getting in for people wanting to access coaching and therapy services is relating to, to covid that's number one so people accessing it because of the pressures that are coming with covid and they're feeling unable to cope um no relationship no problems there. work pressure financial concerns they're the other low covid they're the top three uh, that we're seeing yeah so you've you've Obviously, you've touched upon it. Let's go into that then. Inside Out. What is it? Let's... So Inside Out is a mobile app. Um, we have two sections within the app. One is preventative healthcare. One is early intervention. So the preventative healthcare, we have a personalized mental fitness um, program. Um, so we take users through a selection of questions. And based on that, we give them a gym workout, essentially, but for their mind. So it's all based on mental fitness tools. And in the early intervention, we have online video therapy coaching sessions. And then we offer this to employees um, as an employee benefit. So you basically, you've, you've taken what you started with initially with the, um, the, 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 the you know, um, physical health, uh, the same thing. You've eventually turned it, you've turned your attention into mental health now. And inside that, inside that was born. Why was it born? What was the idea? How... <laughs> There's always a spark. 
every time there's a, there's a spark. You, sometimes you're just in a pub. Sometimes you're just watching Netflix and something just pops up. Sometimes you're just thinking, oh, God, it's been staring at me all this time. Tell us about that moment. Um, what what so happened? I think there's a few things, actually. It wasn't just kind of like a light bulb moment, I think. Um, so like I said at the beginning, my background is um, very much in, in health and wellness. Like my passion is in health and wellness, and that's both physical and mental health. Um, so I have that kind of that side. I have my academic background in that too. Um, but yeah, in 2013, I had my own battle with a form of post-traumatic stress following a bereavement in 2010 that I hadn't dealt with. Um, that erupted into a whole array of different problems. And um, yeah, I was given access to the, the company's EAP, Employee Assistance Programme, and their insurance um, provider. But the support I got wasn't really fit for purpose and wasn't what I needed. And when I kind of you know talked about how I was feeling and my emotions at work, I just people didn't really know how to support me or what to say or kind of you know what to do. And um, that kind of that road to recovery and that ability to, to access support was quite a cumbersome um, process. And it was a really long road to recovery. And I just and my physical sorry my mental health problems then um, escalated into physical health problems, and it was uh, it just it wasn't a great time and. You know, the, with the post-traumatic stress, it was like constant feelings of upset, crying, self-blame, all of these things that were, were going on. Um, and then the physical health that stemmed from that, because I wasn't taking care of my mental health needs and stopping and taking the time to recover, led into exhaustion, sleepless nights and things like that. And all of these things weakened my immune system. So I ended up with autoimmune disease um, and a bunch of different viruses that attacked um, when my immune system was weakened so you know when I made the full recovery and came out the back of that I just thought there's got to be a better way for people to access the support and the care that they need and that's where Inside Out's come from it's come from kind of live personal experience of knowing that there's got to be a better way of providing provision for people and that actually a one-size solution doesn't fit all um, but also from a passion of I just you know excitement and joy that comes with working in the, in the, the health uh, fitness wellness space uh, and knowing that what we're doing now with inside out we're improving the lives of people and you know potentially even saving lives um, and that you know that passion and that um, ability to, to have that kind of level of social impact is something that drives myself and the team on a, a daily basis and that's yeah very much where inside outs come from so it is Inside Out, then, it is a proof in itself that just talking about your problems doesn't make them go away. That there is, a, you need sometimes, professional help yeah. at times. Yeah, sometimes help. you need professional help, you know. Yes, we can talk to our friends. Yes, we can talk to our family members about how we're feeling. But sometimes actually to talking to a third party provider or individual or person, whatever you want to call them, um, that can give you a subjective view um, that will be there to listen in a non-judgmental way. And they've got the tools to be able to help you navigate your way through that. Um, so sometimes we need, sometimes we need a little help and it's not a bad thing. You know, like I say, sometimes we need a little bit of help to get over physical problems, whether it's a throat infection, we might need some antibiotics to, to kill that off. You know, sometimes we need to talk to a specialist, counsellor or a therapist to, to help us navigate those challenging times that we're going through. And that's completely normal. And it's completely um, OK to, be, to, you know, to, to have that. And actually, you know, it would be great if we could create a world where everybody has a therapist, like they have a, an assigned GP and that if they ever need help, they've got someone that they could go to. And you know, that would be an amazing place to get to. <laughs> I bet it would be. I, 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 I would. I would absolutely love that um so not not to you know uh move or, or not to bring business you know, i don't necessarily want to turn this fantastic um topic into a business conversation but inside out is yeah. a business it is you know it's a startup so what's the market like at the moment for a startup like inside out how how um how do you guys, you know, distinguish yourselves from what whatever competition um, is out there? Is there really a market? I mean, I, I presume so. We are in COVID, so there probably have never been a better time. But you know, to, to this is just me from the outside talking. Obviously, you're on the inside. So 
tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, like we said at the, earlier, there's uh, a lot of hot air being given to mental health. And, you know, you know, people, when I talk about what I do, they're like, oh my God, that's amazing. It's great that you're helping people. Fantastic. But they'll say, is there a market for it? You know, and I'll be like, yes, actually there is, because telemedicine at the moment is in its infancy. And this was pre-COVID, I think, you know, and in its infancy, it was still an 80 billion global market. Uh, it was still insanely huge, even for a, a very, very early stage sector. And then, of course, COVID hit and it's just gone crazy. It's just exploded. But we're still right at the very beginning. You know, yes, there are a lot of people talking about mental health. There is a lot of hot air out there. But what we really, really need to get to now is the substance behind all of this. You know, we don't need people just talking about it. We need people to actually start taking action and actually providing valuable, accredited and proven solutions that can help people. Uh, you know, and what I'm seeing, you know, there are a lot of mental health startups out there. And I have to question, uh, you know, the, the clinical efficiency of some of them you know, because if you're dealing in healthcare which essentially you are if it's mental health it's still healthcare they have to be governed by certain frameworks certain standards and things like that so having something that has the right accreditations that meets the correct standards um, is really really important um, and having people on the team on the founding team in particular that have got uh, the the relevant skills and experience to be able to execute on that is really important and i think you know that's something where inside out comes out into its own in that we have the relevant uh, standards and frameworks they've all been met we have the medical guidelines and we have adherence to those and we have the stamp of approval to say that yes we do adhere to those I think also like our understanding that we're not a one size fits all solution either. And we're not just here to make bang for our buck because we thought, oh, look, here's a hot topic. Let's just enter this industry. Let's just create something because there's an opportunity. Um, it's very much been driven out of personal need um, and from a, a background of uh, expertise. Of course, but, but I mean, you, you've 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 spent you've spent pretty much um, your entire academic career in that, yeah. and you've brought your personal experiences into it. And that's how this was. This idea was born. This is your third year now. You're going into your uh, third year of, uh, or Inside Out's third year. What challenges, you know, have you can you share with us? Challenges, startup challenges that you 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 have, uh, you know, experienced, faced, overcome. Well, I think now. when we started this journey, even in even in 2018, people were still looking at me as if I was crazy. They were like why do you want to run a mental health company no one's ever going to purchase those services no one will ever buy them companies are not thinking about all of this um so that was like that was one of the biggest hurdles and then trying to get investors to believe that it was a, a space that they want to to be in and to be a part of and to kind of get them to take it seriously and um, so that was like the biggest well there was trying to get the initial lot of investors on board um, and then trying to get the initial companies to be able to run the pilots to get the proof of concepts they were two, um, I guess, of our biggest challenges from day one. Um, but yeah, we, we found actually recruiting the team hasn't been that difficult. It, you know, we was below us. when we put the, the adverts out, we often get a lot of covering letters with people saying, look, I really want to be a part of this team because like, not only do I have the right skills and expertise you're looking for, I want to work for a company that is creating a level of social impact that is improving the lives of people. So I want to have, work for a company that has those values and has that do good mission, even though they are essentially a startup company. Um, but also I've been through that myself and maybe I have or haven't told anyone before, but actually, you know, I've experienced mental health problems and I know how much of an impact it can have on people's lives. And I want to make sure that other people don't have to go through what I went through. Um, so, Obviously, it's not a prerequisite. We don't have on the screening form a question that says, have you had mental health problems? And if you tick it, no, we don't hire you because absolutely that's not the case. Um, but it's just an interesting factor, I think, that we found. Um, uh, what made you, what, how did you overcome the challenge, that challenge, you know, getting people on board, the investors, um, the, the uh, like you said, getting the, your, your MVP? How did you overcome that challenge? I'm, I'm, I'm guessing they yeah. were bought into you because you are the product. Yeah, I think just by kind of sharing my personal story, um, I found that that's like the best way and people buy people, right? Especially in the early days. So uh, um, the initial investors were friends and family. Then beyond that, that was kind of, we did an angel round. Uh, and yeah, every investor that I spoke to, they said, we're, Laura, we're investing in you. You know, you're the investable person here. Yes, the idea is good, but 
you are what we are investing in. You are what we are taking a chance on. Uh, and yeah, you know, all those investors that came in, they're now following on and they're really pleased with the, the progress that we're making. So that's, you know, that's really good, really pleasing to, to hear. Um, and I think you know, in terms of how we overcame with the companies, we just found some companies that resonate, my story resonated with them. You know, I'm very open and honest. I can talk for hours about um, you know, sort of my, my, journey, my journey, what I went through and you know, I go into companies and do hour long talks on it. I've given you a snippet today of a, a couple of minutes of what that looked like. But um, yeah, I think, you know, again, they're sort of buying into to my, to myself and my personal experience. And then you know, we often find one or two supporters within companies where they'll speak up and say, oh, actually, yes, you know, I've had a really tough time. And yes, I could have used Inside Out and Inside Out would have been amazing if it were available to me. So it's a no brainer for you for us to use you. And then that then, sort of, you know, we started with kind of the SME market and then that's sort of growing now into larger corporates. Obviously, you've I mean, you've clearly done quite well so far, <laughs> fantastically well, uh, to the point that uh, you're, in fact, hiring your next we are. head yes. of tech, tech lead. What's what what's do you want to tell us a little bit about that? What's going on here? What are you looking for? Yeah, what so what is this about? A tech lead to, to join the team. Um, we've got fo uh, two full time developers um, that work with us and we've had a part time CTO um, so far. But we're now looking for a, a tech lead or head of tech um, to come in and to really take ownership of that uh, team to start to work more closely with myself, you know, understanding what the business requirements are um, and then and the tech requirements, kind of putting that together, working on the product roadmap um, and then, you know, helping to, to hit the OKRs and the deliverables to, to be able to execute on that product. Um, so. I think it's a really exciting opportunity because, you know, essentially the team's super small at the moment um, and they've got whoever comes into this role is going to have a relatively blank canvas to work from. Um, but yeah, they'll be able to shape the, the team going forward. They'll be able to help shape the product roadmap, be able to help shape um, the, the, the platform itself and, and what it's capable of doing. And our platform isn't just our mobile app. We've, you know, we've got a version of the app for the coaches and the therapists. We have um supporting uh, dashboards for companies so, so there's actually put three or four different products uh, within inside out so um, it's going to be a busy time for whoever comes in um to, to this role but you know ultimately over time um you know there'll be an opportunity to to grow and advance and um you know if somebody the right person were to come along would i say no to a co-founder no don't think so. I think that could potentially. Ooh, so a potential CTO yeah, co-founder that, that opportunity. could be on the radar for the right person potentially. So. Oh, that, yeah. that, that, that is quite exciting. That is really, really exciting. I'm sure, you know, um, the people listening, um, you know, a lot of them yeah. would be quite buzzing about that, but, um, you know, I suppose that's what one of our, one of the things that our community is about. Uh, also, for our listeners, uh, Laura will be joining us in an event upcoming in January. We haven't set the date to that. We will let you know all about it. Uh, but it's uh, projected to take place on the 3rd of January, where we will talk in depth about um, everything that's happening in the company at the moment from a tech perspective, the challenges, and this specific role in far more detail. So be sure to uh, subscribe to that event, uh, get your tickets, which as always, they're always free, <laughs> but, but make sure you get the tickets for that. Um, awesome. Laura, this is, has been incredible. Um, I'm sure the audience have really enjoyed that. Um, I really have. It, you know, it opened my eyes to certain things that I wasn't really, um, you know, necessarily... Uh, they weren't necessarily open to, um, especially probably from someone to someone you know like me comes from a, a, you know a, a different culture, um, the macho culture, but to an extreme level, um, the value of mental health, uh, what Inside Out are doing, I'm most likely going to be a potential. <laughs> oh, please do, yeah. Future. I mean, look, if anybody's um, struggling out. right now, please you know download the app. If you search for Inside Out, um, or actually Inside Out Twenty Five, will we'll make it more searchable um, on the the app stores and Google Play stores. Go go and find it. Um, you know, yeah, we're there to help. If anyone is struggling right now, you know, during the the COVID times, during Christmas, whatever it is, you know, please, 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 don't suffer alone. Please reach out and get the help and support that you need. And um, the last thing we want are, are people struggling. So, yeah. Absolutely. Um, and one you thing I didn't actually go. ask you at the beginning, I which I should have done. How are you? How are go you ahead. actually doing? 
like really not not, um, not just like the traditional yeah i'm fine like the bloke answer like how are you really doing oh god you, you are yeah. something beyond the bloke answer um well to, COVID has been tough COVID has been tough um it's been um it, it, an, an absolute roller coaster um of of uh <laughs> emotions i suppose um f for us as a community we've, we've got to or i've got to speak to a lot of people and it really hit home covid hasn't been easy um mm. on anybody um i've spoken to people um extremely senior people um at times um who have just been, you know, they've, they've, they've lost their jobs. Uh, some conversations uh, actually included speaking to people who, um, you know, they were expecting uh, a baby coming up and they just didn't have a clue how to make ends meet, how to survive their mortgage, um, you know, and these conversations, they, you know, they, they were quite difficult. Um, we, we, you know, we we were hit obviously um like many people probably um certain members of the family suffered through covid we couldn't really go and visit it was mm. an absolute nightmare um on the bright side um you know i'm glad to say that there is a bright side and uh but it's really unfortunate and sad that mm. i can't say that for everybody that we've spoken with for many many people we haven't actually and we're keeping in touch with them but we haven't seen that bright side come yet and um I, I i'm you know i'm lost for words for that uh but for us the bright side is that you know we're, we're working with exciting organizations we are able to still bring opportunities to the community uh you know to try and help people um you know get back on track a lot of people have mm. gone off track uh in regards to employment which um i don't know be, be, be might agree here but it is a huge pillar of probably mental health stability you know having secure employment at least you're mm. making ends meet you know food on the table you're not on the street you're securing your home you're you're safe you're not worried um so yeah i mean i've we i've fared far better than um many many people when i hear the stories i i, I feel probably and i don't know if that's the right thing to say but i feel that i shouldn't really be talking compared to um, you know, compared to a lot of people who have much worse, have gone through much worse. I think my light is now going off again, but I can you know, probably trim that out later. I don't know. But yeah, I think I'm doing much better than yeah, people, but I just to be honest. You shouldn't uh, compare yourself to other regards. people, though. Everyone's emotions are equally valid. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. That's 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 that's, that's, <laughs> see, that's a lesson. <laughs> I, I, I think I think we do. We do have that. And it, uh, it's 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 probably difficult breaking the um the the trend which you were mm. raised on um you know that always stay tough um the, the, it's, it's very difficult to break which is why the more we talk about mental health the easier it makes it for mm. you know for people to talk about it um as a you know as a, i can only speak as a guy i don't know i speak with my wife and she tells me no you know she's you know for her mm. it wasn't always easy given who she is uh but she's seen her friends they talk about things etc which has always helped for me i'd never been surrounded by anybody actually who's ever opened up uh for us it was never me and my group a group of friends colleagues etc it was never something that we discussed um i don't know for whatever reason so yeah someone like me is very <laughs> grateful for, for 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 you know for, for the for you guys, uh, for organizations like Inside Out, uh, people like you, Laura, who are just, you know, bringing the conversation, you know, to the table. Let's talk about it. Let, let, let us address it. The more we talk about it, the less, um, the less, um, what's the word, uh, uh, awkward it becomes um, to talk about, the more comfortable we feel that we are okay to talk about it and i'm getting a bit emotional here. what's going on i don't know if that's your expert if, that, if that's your expert side you're bringing out a lot i'm talking a lot i'm not sure if i'm making sense actually here now or not but uh yeah that's okay. thank you for asking i'm i'm doing you know i'm doing all right uh um much better now compared to the start of the year we've definitely seen some very very difficult days um but uh yeah i, I think it's this this year has been a lesson 
that it's okay exactly. to talk. It's okay to seek help. Uh, so, you know, everyone here in the community, um, I think it's a common thing I would say in the community that, um, I'm, I'm, you know, we see that as a community that within the tech industry, uh, we're not necessarily as vocal mm -hmm. about it, about mental health, unfortunately. Um, probably because of the, the, the nature of the work. Uh, in many cases, you know, in a developer's life, uh, working life, you're always on your own, you're coding, you're developing, you just want your own space. And then there's not much interaction happening at times, mm -hmm. uh, especially now we're working from home. And this has been catastrophic. There's no, there's no one to even look at next to you to, 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 to just chat with. Uh, and probably the stress of webinars, online meetings, which I find incredibly stressful. I know a lot of the people in the community have also you know, said that this is something they go through. They find it very stressful. Um, just it's always constant meetings. Um, so yeah, I think for us as a community, speaking as, you know, people working on this community, this is something we definitely need to talk about. And if anything, we're very happy now that we've got inside out as a member of this community, hopefully we'll, you know, guys, um, Laura, I think yep, you have your do. own podcast yep. as well, I believe. So that's oh, something we will you. definitely share. We'll put that out uh, because we can't talk about it enough. I've babbled enough for a few <laughs> minutes now, but that's the, this is what happens when someone actually tells you, tell me how you are, but don't tell me I'm all right, Asa. Tell me how you are. So um, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. You're Thank welcome. you very much for that. Laura. Well, this is it, right? We've just but, got to give people time and space to talk about it and not not give people a chance to uh, to say that they're fine and not really be okay. So, and I think it's okay if they make yeah, it. Doesn't make any talk. sense. It's all right. Yeah, if you talk exactly. Nonsense, just it's give okay. them space to let them talk in a non-judgmental, you know, in a in a safe environment, and and that's you know, it's one of the best things you can do. So, if no one does anything else, just ask someone today how they're doing and give them a chance to to speak. That's fantastic. Thank you very much for that. But we can't end this podcast there yet. In a typical Silicon Roundabout fashion, we do have the the, oh God, the, the, the questions we have to ask. <laughs> oh, nothing, nothing, nothing to worry about here. But first question, what's your favorite uh, color, Laura? Oh gosh, pink. <laughs> I remember girls, pink. so I don't know, I'm just Why a girl. Pink? <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> a a a anything, what would you like pink or what's the fa your favorite thing um, that's colored pink? Ironically, oh, uh, my, uh, pink my car, phone case, pink back top. of my phone case is pink. Yeah, there you go. Ah, and oh, my so watch. That, oh, fair. So it's I not watch. the bright yeah, pink, it's the yeah, blush pink. Blush pink, rose uh, gold, uh, rose gold, blush pink. Uh, yeah. See, see that's, a new, that's a new thing I've learned only a few days ago from my wife, because I used to always call it pink. So we had to be an argument. Said, <laughs> it is not just pink, it is blush pink. So yeah, I've learned something new a couple of days ago. What's your favorite holiday location? Oh, holiday, location. holiday location. Somewhere hot and sunny, definitely a beach definitely a beach definitely yes a beach. i mean i love skiing and um skiing. yeah beach or mountains definitely beach i think but i do love skiing as well fair enough if you were to be a cartoon character who would it be what would you be oh gosh wow um well i can see something with here my there's a there's a folder here with tigger on it i'm, I'm at my parents home and uh, <laughs> kinds of weird and wonderful kids <laughs> stuff lying around um i mean tigger just looks like fun he just bounces around he just doesn't seem to have a care in the world <laughs> so, so that's yeah they, you'd like to be tigger if you yeah, could yeah i mean you'd be tigger. he looks happy so why not <laughs> i have Fantastic. no idea i'm, I'm just it. i'm just sat here yeah. looking at a winnie the Pooh what? folder so <laughs> Ah, uh, fair. Well, it's the idea that if you did have one, a favorite cartoon character, for example, for whatever reason, who would that be? That's oh, the idea. I see. Um, but if it's Tigger, we'll take that. Oh, I don't know. Some kind of superhero, like. Some kind of superhero. Yeah. Ooh, you're, 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 you're actually, you're, oh, you're okay. turning on our next question, which is, if you were to have a superpower, what would it be? To fly. I'd love to be able to fly. Mm. Like, do you wanna, would you like to have just the wings to or just fly, the, ability, like to the fly? ability just to kind of like look at the world from like a bird's eye view? I just think it'd be pretty cool. That would be pretty cool. That would be very, very cool. Last question. If you were to be able to solve one global crisis, what would I mean, it be? other than the mental health pandemic, right? 
<laughs> you can't really choose that. Okay. You can't choose that. That's what you. This is what you're actually tackling as um, it stands. So you can't. Choose COVID. That. I'm just sick to death of this whole situation. I just want everyone to be able to, all families to be reunited with one another, and for people to be able to go about their daily lives again. Yeah. There you go. A regular um, superhero. Yeah. That's Laura. Just wants to cure <laughs> everything bad, everything wrong in this world. Fantastic. Laura, this has been incredible. Thank you You're so much welcome. for joining us today. Uh, I cannot wait till this is uh, launched uh, um, to hear the feedback, which is going to be incredible. Like I said to all our audience and listeners, Laura will be joining us in an event in January, third week of January. We are yet to set the date, but of course, you'll be the first to know once we do, uh, to discuss her startup, Inside Out, and the specific... Um, vacancy that she's looking to fill at the moment, which is the tech lead slash potential yeah. CTO <laughs> co-founder. So it's a very, very exciting and interesting vacancy. Um, and I think we on that, uh, on that note, we will probably end for today. Once again, thank you very much, Laura. It is 11 a.m. here today. And I wish you a fantastic rest great, of the day. Great. Thank you so much. Have a great Christmas, everyone. <laughs>